I'm going to present learning accurate dense correspondences and when to trust them. In this work, we tackle the problem of dense correspondence estimation. From a pair of reference and query images, we want to find the flow field relating each pixel of the reference to the query. We visualize this by varping the query according to that flow. As you can see, dense flow estimation is prone to failure in case of occlusion. It can also be inaccurate, particularly for large appearance and viewpoint changes, and it is even ill-defined in textualist regions such as the sky. However, lots of applications such as pose estimation require highly accurate and robust matches as input. So how can we know when and where to trust the estimated correspondences? We address this question by proposing probabilistic dense correspondence network. Together with the flow field, we infer a confidence map according to which the red regions are uncertain. And you see that those uncertain regions correspond to the occluded, the ill-defined, and the inaccurate matching regions. Now let's dive into the method. While most methods train a network to predict a flow vector y at each location, our goal is to predict the conditional probability density of each flow vector y given the input images. In practice, the network predicts at each pixel location the parameters phi of this flow density, which encode both flow and uncertainty information. So how do we parameterize this flow density? From this empirical error distribution, we see that errors can be categorized into two populations, inlayers and outliers. Current probabilistic methods mostly rely on a Laplacian model. It has two parameters, the mean, which corresponds to the estimated flow vector, and the variance parameter. We instead use a constrained mixture model. It has m Laplace components. All components have the same mean, but different variances. Moreover, each component is responsible for a different range of uncertainties, roughly corresponding to different regions of the error distribution. Compared to the single Laplace, the incentive of our approach is that it allows to predict for each match the probability of inlayer versus outlayer, each model by separate Laplace components. So now, at each pixel location, the network predicts the mean flow vector and the uncertainty components from those with an estimated single confidence value. Because it is difficult to obtain dense ground truth data, most methods rely on self-supervised data. The training image pairs are generated with simple transformations like here. However, for these transformations, the network learns to heavily rely on global smoothness priors and interpolation. But this strategy does not generalize well to real data. It leads to overly confident uncertainty predictions such as here in the sky or in the field. Ideally, we would like the confidence estimation to exclude all of these areas. So we tackle the uncertainty generalization issue from the data and the network perspective. In terms of data, the major problem is that the synthetic flows are too predictable. We thus introduce small perturbations in the flow that will break its global smoothness. From the architecture perspective, the straightforward choice to predict all parameters of a distribution would be to start from the standard architecture and to increase the number of output channels. However, in that case, the network relies too much on neighboring information when predicting the uncertainty. Therefore, from the standard architecture, we'll build a parallel uncertainty decoder. It inputs the correlation volume and processes the information at each point independently. While this was the results before, our approach leads to much better uncertainties. We obtain the PDCNet architecture by adding our uncertainty decoders in GluNet GoCore. We train our network using the negative log likelihood loss as the only objective on both self-supervised data and sparse ground truth data. Now let's look at the results. We first show qualitative results on scenes of megadepth. This is the VARP query according to PDCNet, and the unreliable regions are shown in red. To compare, we also train a non-probabilistic network, GluNet GoCore, on the same data. We see that our probabilistic formulation not only allows to identify accurate from inaccurate regions, but it also improves the flow prediction itself. In this other example, we see that PDCNet does very well in extreme appearance and viewpoint changes. In terms of metrics, PDCNet outperforms previous state-of-the-art on multiple benchmarks such as Megadepth, Robotcar, ETH3D, and Kitty. We also evaluated PDCNet for pose estimation on YFCC by using only the predicted confident matches. Our method outperforms the previous dense state-of-the-art as well as standard sparse methods. With PDCNet, we can also do dense 3D reconstruction. The first step is to find dense confidence matches. We see that our approach finds matches even for large viewpoint changes. We then feed all of these confidence matches to Colmap, and this is the resulting 3D reconstruction of the Aachen city. We see here that buildings are reconstructed with high quality. Finally, PDCNet is applicable for the task of texture transfer, as in this video. Here, our approach finds matches between pairs with extreme appearance variations. Thank you.